Remember this board, right? It's the power amp board from that Fisher receiver of earlier. Well, I made some assumptions about how this thing operated that were incorrect. These and these, let me focus here, are not current mirrors for the input stage at all. They're actually a driver stage. Go figure. Yeah, the STK0100 Roman 2 is not nearly as integrated as you would think. It is literally just a power amp. So it requires a drive stage. Now, what's interesting to note is that during this time, Fisher was owned by Sanyo, and Sanyo makes the STK modules. They also made a companion to that STK module, and which was, of course, another STK module that contained a drive stage, a deluxe drive stage. It had current mirrors, it had differential inputs, the works. They did not use that here. I don't know why. It would have been great. They would have likely gotten literally an order of magnitude less distortion. They might have been able to get this thing down to 0 0.005 instead of 0 0.05. For, for whatever reason, it wasn't used. And uh, that's a bit unfortunate because there were some nasty little layout problems on this board that uh, probably, while it's still a good receiver, don't get me wrong, it's a really nice receiver, it could have been an epic receiver had they changed a few things. Let's go over this. First thing, the power supply could have been put elsewhere inside the unit. There's some underutilized space in the unit. I could have relocated that and put a more elaborate amplifier here. Um, whether they had a model that could have done that and in a market segment I don't know. Maybe at this time Fisher just wasn't that big of a brand and they didn't have a market for it. It's unfortunate they could have made a slightly higher end unit. What's really unfortunate though isn't the fact that it doesn't have a current mirror. It's just a simple three-stage uh, driver. This is the first stage, second stage, and third stage. What's unfortunate is that cap that was that's now taken out. I thought it was the timing cap for the protection I see. And the reason I thought that was because it was colored orange and it looked like, at first glance, a low leakage capacitor. Now on the Kenwoods, they use a fairly large low leakage cap as the timing uh, cap in an RC circuit for the uh, turn-on delay. That's not what's going on here. The reason that cap was orange, yes, it was to denote a special feature of the capacitor, but it was not its leakage. It was its temperature rating. It was not 85C. It was not 105C. It was rated at 125C. That's a bit unprecedented in consumer electronics. I've never seen that before in a piece of consumer gear. I've seen it in industrial gear. I've seen it in automotive control gear things like ECUs, etc., but never in a stereo. And the reason is simple. Every other manufacturer wasn't completely stupid with their layouts. They didn't place capacitors in between really hot resistors and really hot Zener diodes in a shunt regulator. Again, had they placed the power supply on a different board or slightly enlarged this board, they wouldn't have had to cram it all in that little area right there rather unfortunate. I initially thought that those were the plus and minus 15 regulators. They would be on most units, but that's not the case. That's actually a regulator that feeds these driver stages, and they they run at a pretty high voltage, probably very close to what's on those filter casts, probably plus and minus 55 volts or so. I haven't uh, gotten it all put back together so I can probe it and to see what that actually is. Again, I don't have the schematic or the service manual. Any additional information that I'm gleaning here is from simply tracing it out the circuit by hand. The actual timing capacitor is C491, which is a 47 microfarad unit. I figured that out by looking up the data sheet for the uh, HA12002 protection IC. I've replaced the emitter resistors. Um, you never trust anything that got glowing hot. <laughs> that would just be dumb of me. 
Um, everything else looks good. The board's been defluxed. I've cleaned it and repaired a lot of cold solder joints. Let me refocus here. You can see a lot of new solder joints. These traces are pretty big. My fingers are huge, so I'm going to give you an idea how much current capability this thing has. The uh, maximum collector current of the transistors inside the STK module is 15 amps. It is a substantial amplifier. You can see it is made by uh, Sanyo Corporation. As I said earlier, Sanyo owned Fisher at this time. So it is essentially a Sanyo stereo and not a Fisher. It is very Japanese, we'll put it that way. But uh, it's not quite as good as a Techniques. I s Don't get me wrong, it, it is a good unit. It is worth what I'm asking for it. But uh, I would not trade it for something like a Techniques SA-1010. Uh, the 1010 is a better unit, period. Granted, if I had a 1010, it would probably be selling for about 300 to 350 dollars, not about 100, 150 to 160. I did have a little snag procuring capacitors. Um, the ones I got had the wrong lead spacing, and there's no way I can make them work. So I'm gonna have to pay full price for those, and then I had to I have to pay shipping to get that guy in because I don't have any because it's 125 degrees C. And I don't, I don't get much industrial equipment anymore. I mean, I, I've gotten it a, a few times and needed them, but I, I don't keep those on, on hand. Uh, I'm a stereo shop and a computer shop. I keep caps for stereos and computers. And none of that needs 125 degree capacitors. So I've got to order that in, and that alone is going to cost me eight bucks in shipping. So. Yeah, this this unit's probably going to be around the 150 to 160 mark. A little on the pricey side for a Fisher, but uh, probably not for a restored one. Um, this one's almost getting... It is a selective recap, but it's, it's going to have better than new performance when I'm done with it. It's a modified Fisher. <laughs> I'm going to upgrade those caps a little bit and get a little transient headroom. I know the STK modules can give it to me, um, but that's about it. I did figure out what these capacitors were. This is for the bias stabilization network. Um, that's going to get replaced with film. Um, I'm going to have that shipped in along with that guy. Uh, we don't want that going bad. Really, really bad things could happen to the amplifier if that happens. The other cap is... Uh, a compensation capacitor according to the data sheet. I'm guessing it's phase compensation. Keeps it from oscillating. But uh, everything looks good here. I'll uh, make a video about the uh, rest of the unit and discuss some of the things I would have changed had I been lead designer on this guy. Um, we certainly wouldn't have had any of that business. Uh, I can make it reliable. I mean the cap was technically still good. It was just looking like it was about to fail. And I'm going to put a higher temperature rated cap in there anyway. It'll probably never break, but still, it's just not a good design when you if you can avoid using an expensive high temperature capacitor just by changing the layout. Do it. And that it, it's senseless. But yeah. So they did something strange. I'll make it work. Hmm. Support the circuit board when removing or installing the connector plugs. No kidding. Well, that's about all there is for uh, the uh, circuit analysis on this guy. It is weird. It is still, though, fairly good, if not a little bit squirrely. <laughs>